Hallelujah. Father, I thank you for no limits. I thank you for no boundaries. I thank you, Lord, that we see increase all around us. Oh, Father, I thank you for your presence that's here. Holy Spirit, I thank you that you're here. And I thank you that you are our teacher. You are the one that directs us. You show us things to come. So, Father, I thank you that our hearts are open to receive what you have for us today. You know that phrase that Christy was singing, that our eyes would see. That, that's a scriptural prayer. That, that's, 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 that's spiritual. It's scriptural. It's God's desire for us to sing that and to declare that. I mean, the Apostle Paul writes to the church in Ephesus and, and he tells them this and he prays this. He goes, I do not cease to give thanks for you making mention of you in my prayers. That the God of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of glory, may give unto you. Hallelujah. Just hold your hands out like this. Like you're going to receive a gift. All right. See, he's praying over the church and he says that our Father of our Lord Jesus would give you something. He said, may give unto you the spirit of wisdom and revelation in the knowledge of him. That the eyes of your understanding would be enlightened. See, he wants your eyes to see things that you have yet to see. See, sometimes we can be so, um, so focused on the things that are right in front of us. The pressures, the hurt, the pain, the, 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 how, how um, everything looks around us. But here he says, I want your eyes to be open to something. And he says some three things. The eyes to be open to the hope of his calling. Hallelujah. Say with that, your hands and say, I receive that. And hold your hands back out. And the next thing was, it says to the eyes would be open to the riches of the glory of his, his inheritance in the saints. Say, I receive that. You see, there's an inheritance available to you. And Paul's praying, I want your eyes to be open to that. You need to see what are the possibilities that God has for your life. Paul said, I want your eyes to open the thing that you have a right to. The things that are rightfully yours, that your eyes would be open to that. The inheritance. And he says this, hold your hands back out. It says the exceeding, the eye, your eyes would be open to the exceeding greatness of his power. See, I receive that. See, that you could see the hope of this calling. You could see the inheritance and you could see the exceeding greatness of his power. Hallelujah. You know, Dr. Savell, last week as our founding pastor, our apostle over this house, he had a word back in September and told us that 2020, God is opening a new door. And will bring supernatural increase like never before. Last week he, he talked about how. And he, the Lord spoke him on September 13th. And he said that, that you will have 2020 vision in 2020. Have 2020 vision for 2020. What is 2020 vision? It's being able to see things with clarity. And see things with sharpness. To be able to see exactly what we need to see. Father, we thank you for your word today. And I thank you as a church body. I thank you that our ears are open, our eyes are open, and our hearts are open. We thank you for supernatural increase coming into our lives in Jesus' name. Give him a shout of praise. Amen. Hallelujah. Thank you, Father. Hallelujah. Give someone a high five and welcome them to Heritage of Faith. And Tim, how good is to see them. Hallelujah. Thank you, Father. If you have your Bibles, turn to Matthew chapter 13. Amen. I'm going to deal with a a few things um, that I dealt with in the first service. Um, But then I'm also going to share some things that I didn't share in the first service. And so I encourage you, uh, if you have the opportunity or... I command you, <laughs> as your pastor, as your shepherd, to go on and listen to the, the first service, because I, I believe it's, uh, the Lord's teaching us something today that we need, that the body of Christ needs. And it all has to do with this, what do we see? 
what do we hear and what do we understand? Thank you, Father. You know, it's God's desire and it is His, his heartbeat that you increase. I mean, that, that's something you, you need to settle. It's His desire. It's what He desires for your life to increase. And uh, people have a lot of different ideas of what increase is, and and it's and it's way beyond just financial. It has to do with financial. But I'm, when I when we say increase, I, we're talking about increasing with wisdom, increasing in revelation, increasing in opportunities, increase in in the glory of God, increase in 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 signs and wonders and miracles, and an increase. You know. In in, uh, 2 Corinthians chapter 3, verse 18, it says that as we beholding his face, it says we are changed from one degree of glory to another. So meaning as as we behold the right things, as we look at the right things, it's going to cause us to see things. As we see things, it's going to cause us to come up higher, right? As you're beholding, right? As you're beholding. These things, you'll be transformed from one degree of glory to another. That sounds like increase. Amen. And that's his desire for our lives. But so often we may not see the right things or hear the right things or understand the right things. So let's look here in Matthew chapter 13. Matthew chapter 13. I'm going to do a little bit of teaching here. So let's just open our hearts to receive this. Thank you, Father. Matthew chapter 13, verse 9 says, He who hath ears to hear, let him hear. And the disciples came and said unto him, Why? Hallelujah. He had ears to hear, let him hear. That was, do you hear that? Yeah, that's, that was not planned. So, Hallelujah. Good timing, Penny. That was great. Perfect. Perfect. So he who hath ears to hear, let him hear. You know, there's, you can come to church and we can all hear the same thing, but not hear the same thing. <laughs> you know, there's times where I've, I've preached a message and, and someone will tell me that was a great ma- message, Pastor Justin. And, and they're talking about it. I'm like, did I say that? It's like, did I say that? I mean, it was good things, but it was things that they were hearing and things that they were saying that I didn't realize I said. But yet, the, someone else that heard the same message, they, they were like, man, it was something totally different. But it was the same message. And there's some people that come to church and hear a message and they're like, I didn't get one thing out of that. You know, so it, it depends. Do you have ears to hear? Now, you might be hearing some things, but do you have ears to Hear and the, the the point is it's hearing with the intent to understand. Come on. That's right. And so Jesus is saying here, he says, He who had ears to hear, let him hear. And the disciples came and said to him, Why do you speak unto them parables? And he answered and said to them, Because it's given unto you. Say you. you. Or say me. me. Now get this. It's given unto you to know. This, the, the, no here is about understanding something. No here doesn't, doesn't pertain to you heard it one time, but now it's, there's an understanding with it. You know it. And because you know it, you can't be talked out of it. Why? Because you know it. So it's given unto you to know what? The mysteries of the kingdom. Because it is given unto you to know the mysteries of the kingdom. So we could say this, verse 9 says, he who hath ears to hear. What are we listening for? The mysteries of the kingdom. It says, but to them it is not given. For whoever has, to him shall be given. And he shall have more abundance. And whoever hath not, from him shall be taken away, even to them that has not. Now, when I used to, was reading in the word about this and years ago and learning scripture, I was, I would get confused about this scripture because all of, all of a sudden I was just kind of like, God, that's not fair. 
That's, that's not fair. Now you're here. That person already has something and it says they're going to get more. Then there's this other person that doesn't have anything. And what they have is going to be taken away. That's not fair. That makes no sense. Sorry, I threw the word down there, but, but this is how I have conversations with God. So I can understand Well, I can understand what is he talking here? Because if you're not careful, you can think of, you know, you just gloss over it. And he who has more will be given to him. And he who doesn't have is going to be taken away from him. So, well, that's poor them. But the question you have to ask yourself is what do they have? See, what is the person? He that has, has what? You have to understand the, the verse before that. He who has been given the mystery, he, the mysteries of the kingdom. So he who has the mysteries of the kingdom, if he has the mysteries of the kingdom, then what's going to happen? He's going to operate in more abundance. But he who does not have the mysteries of the kingdom, what he does have will be taken away from him. So the question here depends on not who has more. The question is who has the mysteries of the kingdom? Because the only difference is, is who has the mysteries of the kingdom? Because if you have the mystery of the kingdom, what you have, you're going to have more abundance. But if you don't understand the mysteries of the kingdom, what you have is going to be taken away. So everything has to do here with what you hear. What you hear. And if you hear and you understand the mysteries of the kingdom, you're going to have more abundance. Penny, can you put that up in um, the uh, Amplified? Hallelujah. For whoever... uh, The Amplified. For whoever has spiritual knowledge, to him will more be given. So if you have the mysteries of the kingdom, you're going to be given more. And he will be furnished richly so that he will have abundance. So there's something about knowing these mysteries that are going to cause you to live and walk in increase. But it's also the other side of it. If you don't know the mysteries of the kingdom, you may lose what you have. So God's not playing favorites on who has more and who doesn't have more. Everything comes down to... Do you have ears to hear the mysteries of the kingdom? Now, let me find my place back here in Meth before I so rudely threw my Bible down. Now, let's look at verse 15. It says, For this people's heart is wax gross, and their ears are dull of hearing, and their eyes they have closed. Now, it's interesting that they made a choice. They closed their eyes. They're dull of hearing. Their heart is wax gross. That just means you have a covering on your heart to nothing else can get in. But then he says this. He says, lest at any time they should see with their eyes. They should hear with their ears. And they should understand with their heart and should be converted and I should heal them. So here he goes, you have these people that are dull in their their hearts. Their eyes are closed. They can't hear. Then he said, lest they see, lest they hear and lest they understand. And what would happen? They would be converted and they would be made whole. So there's something about when we receive the mysteries of the kingdom, it has the ability to cause us to be transformed and has the ability to call us to be made whole. Do, do you see that? Just, I'm just teaching, okay? Because I really need you to see this because, because it all bases on do you have ears to hear the mysteries of the kingdom? <clears throat> Meaning there's something about that I've got to receive something that's going to change on how I do life. You know, I am so grateful that I am different than I was 27 years ago when I first came to the word of God. Are you grateful for that in your life? You see, when I started and it wasn't my life didn't get better because all of a sudden Justin got smarter 
or Justin worked harder or Justin did more of this or Justin was just so much of this or Justin did that or I just had these right opportunities or, or you know, I just was born on this, this way or that happened or this family. And no, it came down to when I started getting a hold of the mysteries of the kingdom, my life started to increase. When I started hearing the word and not picking and choosing what I wanted to believe, it caused my life to go to another level. Because this is all about hearing the mysteries of the kingdom. Now, let's keep reading here. And, and uh, as we lay this foundation, look at verse, uh, verse 17. For verily I say to you, this is Jesus speaking, that many prophets and righteous men have desired to see those things which you see. Meaning there were prophets before you that wanted to see the things that you're seeing, but yet they did, weren't able to see them. And they have not seen that. And there's others that have not seen them to hear those things which you hear and they've not heard them. Verse 18, hear ye therefore the parable of the sower. So Jesus is still speaking and he says, you need to hear this. The parable of the sower. But what was this all this talking about? It was all talking about hearing the mysteries of the kingdom. So the parable of the sower is really hearing the mysteries of the kingdom. And he goes in. I'm not going to talk about each soil right now. And I'm not going to deal with that. But I need you to see this today. Because it's all about can you hear what he wants you to hear? Can you see what he wants you to see? And can you understand what he wants you to understand? Because it's in those things... That will cause your life to increase. Now let's look at verse 19. Now when anyone heareth the what? Of what? So the word of the kingdom is the mystery of the kingdom. Now I want to to define this word mystery to you for a moment. Because yes, it's something that's hidden. But the word mystery here more more means like... You know, remember a, a kid and, and, and you would have like your own fort and you make a fort and you had this, we had all these kids on the street and we hung out all summer and you would make a, I lived in the woods. So we had this fort, we make a tree house and those things. And you had, you had a secret knock, right? You had this secret knock and no one knew what that knock was, but the people that were in the club. So when he talks about the mysteries of the kingdom in just in a childlike way, that's what he's referring to. Meaning everyone, everyone has a right to this, but not everyone knows how to get to it. You see, so, so, so this whole aspect, the mysteries of the kingdom is there's some things that are available for you, but do you know how to put it into work? And so here he says this, he goes, if anyone heareth the word of the kingdom... And understands it not. I mean, you can hear the mysteries and don't understand it. What is that man like? What the enemy comes immediately to steal the word. But what is he really stealing? The mystery of the kingdom. You know, the next, the next, in verse 20, it says, but he that receives the seed. Well, what's the seed? The seed is the word of the kingdom, the mysteries of the kingdom. And it goes in and talks about because of offense, because of different things the, that the, it, it springs up, but it doesn't last because it's scorched by its environment and what's going on around it. And the next verse 22 says, he also that receives the seed. So you could say he that also receives the mystery of the kingdom is the one that hears the word. But yet the thorns come in and choke the choke the what the mysteries of the kingdom. See, it's not just taking away the word, it's taking away the mysteries of the kingdom. It's taking away what God desires to do in your life. And then it says this, verse 23, but he that receives the seed, or you could say, he that receives the mysteries of the kingdom. Hallelujah. Into the good ground is he that does what? Heareth the word and understands it. So you receive the mysteries of the kingdom and you hear it, not just hear it, but you understand it. And it talks about that in, in that person, he brings forth what? 30, 60 and a hundred fold. That sounds like increase to me. 
So there's something that we, this being a year that, about to, that we're about to go into, that God is opening a new door and bring about supernatural increase like never before. That there's mysteries of the kingdom that will bring about supernatural increase. Hearing the mysteries of the kingdom. I believe as we step in this next year, whether it be myself or Dr. Savell or other ones standing up here, I believe the Holy Spirit is going to reveal and give us revelations on the mysteries of the kingdom to cause us to have a life that is 30, 60, and 100 fold. Because it's he that hears and understands and sees that's going to cause this supernatural increase. You know, we see this throughout Scripture. We see it throughout the word. We see it in Abraham's life. God spoke to Abraham and said, I want you to leave your house and I want you to go to a land that I will show you. So Abraham had to change his perspective. He had to change where he grew up to go to where God desired him to be. God was waiting him for a supernatural increase, but yet Abraham had to leave a place. He had to think differently than the way his father thought. He grew up as a moon worshiper. So all his family, all his childhood, God was basically the moon. But yet when God shows up and really saying, you want to know the real God? Leave your father's house and follow me and I will bless you and, and you will be a blessing and I will make your name great. That sounds like supernatural increase to me. How about you? But it all had to do with him changing his perspective and shifting his priorities. You see, that's what hearing and seeing and understanding is all about. That what I'm dealing with this morning is if we're going to operate in supernatural increase and see our life go from here to here, it's going to be based on shifting our priorities. But shifting our priorities starts with here. You know, we see it in the life of Moses. Moses is, is a, he's a shepherd and he is on the backside of a desert. And here he was just, for the most part, satisfied being a shepherd. He was one for 40 years. He left where he had come from, knew he had a call upon his life. But, you know, hey, I'm going to flee to the desert. And he's one day he's standing there. And all of a sudden, as he's doing his going about his business, all of a sudden he turns aside and he sees a burning bush. What does the burning bush say? Take off your feet. You're on holy ground. And he says, I've called you. And I've heard the cries of my people. And I have come down to deliver them. I like how God says, I have come down to deliver him, but you know what? I'm sending you. So Moses was going to have to shift his perspective if he was going to see increase in his life. We, we see with David how he was an outcast from his family. He was a shepherd boy, yet he's anointed king. And so God has the ability to take him from where he, where he was to being the king of Israel. That sounds like supernatural increase to me. How about you? See, we see this throughout the entire word that God does not want you to continue to stay where you are in any area of your life. He desires you to increase financially. He's a God of increase. Psalms 115 says those that worship and fear the Lord it said they shall increase more and more them and their children. You see, if you're, if we don't increase financially, then you know what? It's against, it's against God's divine law. That's right. That's right. So when I say an increase, I'm not just talking about money. I'm talking about increasing, increase, expanding your borders, expanding your influence, expanding every aspect of your life. But if you just live with the same perspective, like, well, I heard that message on Sunday and you know, yeah, God, yeah, man, that'd be great if God opened a new door. It'd be great if I had supernatural increase like never before, but you go back and you do the same things you've always done. Right. Right. You know, I, I mean, when I left Maryland and came here, it was because God told me to come here. And I had a lot of people tell me that say, well, well, Justin, if you know, well, why can't you do ministry here in Maryland? Well, why can't you just, you know, go to Bible school and come back here and, and be a part of this church? And well, God didn't say that. 
And I could, I could sit there and, and, and be hoping and a praying, God, I hope you use me in ministry one day. God, I hope you do that. God, I hope you're doing this. Well, God, man, increase me. God, increase me. Well, God's saying all the time, he goes, your increase was in Texas. I had opened a door for you, but your increase was in Texas. And so there's so often we were like, God, yes, we want you to do that. But you know what? You haven't done the last things he told you to do. And so this whole aspect of, if you know, it's time for us to break beyond the borders of what we've done, what we've done, who we are, and the things that God really wants to do in our lives. But you have to see different. 2020 vision for 2020. Hear things different and understand things different. Go to Acts chapter 7. Acts chapter 7. While you're turning there, and I dealt with this in the first service, I'm just going to use this scripture and you can go back and listen to how the Lord took that service. But it says in Isaiah 51, it said, look to Abraham and Sarah who bore you. And he says, when he was but one, he said, I made him many. Look to Abraham. Look to Abraham because, and and who who bore you and, and look to Look to me, look to, look to, because hey, when he was one, I made him many. See, that, that's supernatural increase. But he wanted us to see Abraham. So I encourage you to go back and listen to that. But I want to get into something a little new right now from, from the first service. I love this chapter because, in Acts chapter 7, because it's, you think about it, it's Stephen. He's full of the Holy Ghost. He was chosen by God, full of the Holy Ghost, and he was just a, 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 a servant. He was serving tables. <laughs> and, and yet persecution was coming against the church, and you have Stephen stand there, and they came against him with accusation. And Stephen stands up in the mix, midst of the accusations, and he preaches, 60, he preaches about, he preaches about uh, 49 to 55 verses of the Old Testament. And he starts in the very beginning, he starts with Abraham and he's talking about covenant. He goes down, he deals with David, he deals with Moses. He, he goes through and he deals with all these things, but you have to understand something. Now, before I read this and and share some of these things, I first want us to read verse eight, chapter eight, verse one, chapter eight, verse one. It says, and Saul was not only consenting to Stephen's death, he was pleased and entirely approving. On that day, a great and severe persecution broke out against the church was in Jerusalem and they were all scattered throughout the region of Judea, Samaria, except the apostles. Now, I want you to see that. And Saul was consenting to Stephen's death. Why? why what's important about that? Because you have to understand. When the word is preached, it has the opportunity for faith to come. He who has ears to hear, let him hear. You see, Stephen was preaching. And Paul was listening. Paul might might not have been receiving. Why? Because Paul didn't have ears to hear. He didn't have eyes to see. And he didn't have a heart to understand. Why? Because tradition... Tradition, what are traditions? They're customs. What are traditions? Or tradition can be an addiction. Tradition can be a religious spirit. Tradition can be how it always happens. Tradition, or maybe is maybe how you were taught about God. Tradition could be a number of things. So here Paul is listening, but yet he can't, he can't see it. Why? Because, because of his heart, because of his eyes and because of his ears, he's convinced that he's right. And as long as you're convinced you're okay, you'll never open your eyes to see something greater. So here, here, here Paul is, Stephen's preaching and the word is being sown. 
And I, for the sake of time, I'm just going to read a few verses here in verse 46. I'm going to read the Amplified. Actually, verse 45. And I love that Stephen's talking about the presence of God and worshiping. And he says, our, father, our forefathers in turn brought it, this tent of witness, in with them into the land with Joshua when they dispossessed the nations which God drove out before the face of our forefathers, so it remained here until the time of David. This is, cha- this is uh, chapter 7, verse 45. Verse 46 says, Who found grace, favor, spiritual blessing in the sight of God, and prayed that he might be allowed to find a dwelling place for the God of Jacob? But it was Solomon who built a house for him. However, the Most High does not dwell in houses and temples made with hands, as the prophet says. Now, you've got to understand, this is something that is so, for the lack of better terms, blowing Paul's mind. <laughs> what do you mean God doesn't dwell in a temple? I'm Jewish, and that's only the place where God dwells. You, you see, because you can hear something, but not be able to really hear it because you're seeing it through the lenses of your tradition or the deception that the enemy has continued to surround your life with. And we wonder why we haven't seen increase or we blame God. Thank you, Father. Ah, thank you, Lord. However, the Most High does not, verse 48, they, however, does not dwell in houses and temples made with hands, as the prophet says. Heaven is my throne, and the earth is my footstool for my feet. And this is God speaking, because Stephen's preaching. He says, what kind of house can you build for God, says the Lord? Or what is this place in which I can rest? Was it not my hand that made all of these things? See, he is totally... Punking Paul. <laughs> he is saying, he goes, he, he is saying, you think this is the place to worship. You're crucifying Christians. You're doing all this. And, and he even declares scripture to him. He says, he's saying, he's saying, look, he God's saying, I made all these things. Why would I dwell in it? Why would that be my ultimate desire to dwell in something that you made in your hands? He did it in the Old Testament, but it wasn't God's desire. His desire was always fellowshipping with Adam and Eve from the inside out. But yet, Paul, can he, can he hear what's being said? Because all the while, the Holy Spirit is there. Just like the Holy Spirit is here. And as the word goes forth, you're either going to receive it or you're going to reject it. And if you receive it, it will take you higher. If it reject it, it will cause you to go back. Thank you, Father. And then he says this. Man, I love this guy. This is Stephen preaching. You probably know why they stoned him after this statement, but... You stubborn and stiff-necked people. (laughs) Still heathen and uncircumcised. Wow. I don't feel bad in some of the things I say from the pulpit now. (laughs) Now, now I want you to hear, I want you to hear, because I, I wrote this phrase down, what, is, what does this word uncircumcised mean that Stephen is using? Because he's not really talking about the physical act of circumcision, nor is he really referring to, he's really not even referring to the, the covenant of Abraham, but he's referring, it's a metaphor. It's a metaphor being used here, and, and this is the metaphor. Those whose heart and ears are covered... So when they would hear a metaphor in this word uncircumcised, they knew, (laughs) Paul knew, because he was edgy, knew exactly what Stephen was saying. He was saying, (laughs) you're an idiot and you know nothing. (laughs) This is the other aspect of of that um, metaphor. It means whose soul and senses are closed to divine admonition. 
It's a metaphor, meaning those whose hearts and ears are covered or whose soul and senses are closed to divine admonition. So this is what Stephen's message is. (laughs) You (laughs) stiff-necked, you stubborn, still heathen, meaning you think you're saved, but you're not. You think you're okay, but you're not. I didn't say it. Stephen did. Okay. And you're now get it. He says you're uncircumcised. And what does he say? You're uncircumcised in heart and what? Ears. Ears. What will you allow in your heart and what will you allow in your ears? Or what will you not allow? Because it's either hindering your, it's either hindering you, it's either bringing decrease into your life, or it will bring increase into your life. Wow. They were uncircumcised in heart and ears. The word's being preached, Joseph. The word's being preached. The gospel's being preached. The word is being preached. And all the while, it's trying to, 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 to those that are standing around, it's all God saying, I want to take you higher. It's saying, I want you free from religion. It's saying, I really, really want you to know my presence. I really want you to know that I'm a God that is not only, not that, that, that is from the Old Testament, but I'm a God that wants to manifest in your life right now. Because what do, we, what do we see in Matthew 13? If, if their, their ears could be open, if their eyes could be open, if their heart could be open, they could be what? They could be converted and they could be healed. I believe transformation and healing, healing can go only, only far as your revelation. Paul's standing there. Paul's standing there and, and, he, and he, hmm. he says, you're uncircumcised in heart and ears. Now listen to this. You were always actively resisting the Holy Spirit as your forefathers were. So you are and so you do. The people before you, they went their own way and you're doing the same thing they are. Verse 52, which of the prophets did your forefathers not persecute? And they slew those who proclaimed beforehand the coming of the righteous one or Jesus, whom you now have betrayed and you murdered. Now he's calling them murderers. Verse 53, you who received the law as it was ordained and set in order and delivered by angels and yet you did not obey it. Or you could say another word for law for the sake of what we're dealing with today. You could say, hallelujah. Thank you, Father. The mysteries of the kingdom. Hallelujah. Thank you, Father. Mm. Thank you, Father. You who have received the mysteries of the kingdom as ordained and set in order, delivered by angels, and yet you did not obey it. Now, upon hearing these things, the Jews were cut to the heart. They were infuriated, and they ground their teeth against Stephen. Is anyone grinding their teeth right now? I see no teeth grinded right now. If you're grinding teeth, we'll get you a, one of those things. Hallelujah. It's okay to laugh in church, right? We're going on this journey together, man, because I, I, am, I, want to, I want to know this word. I want to know how his kingdom operates, amen, because I want to see increase all around my life, my children, my family. I want to see you increasing. Thank you, Father. So they were grinding their teeth, verse 55, but he, Stephen, full of the Holy Spirit and controlled by him, gazed into heaven and he saw the glory of God and Jesus standing at the right hand and he said, Look, I wonder how many turned around. Yeah. 
I want, look. Look, I, I, the, the words being preached, the Holy Spirit is here. Jesus, according to Revelation chapter 2, it says that he walks through the churches. And yet, something's being preached. Do we look and we see, or do we look and reject? Stephen's saying, look. I see the heavens open and the Son of Man standing at God's right hand. And they raised a great shout and put their hands over their ears. And what, They put their hands over their ears. They covered their ears. Why? Because they didn't want to change. Thank you, Father. You see, they, they didn't want a new priority. You know what? I really believe, I really believe... Because if Stephen saw it, I believe they could have. But yet they were so infuriated. I believe they might have even looked that direction. I believe they, it doesn't say they didn't see it. It's just, we just know they refused to see it. And they covered their ears. All the while God's saying, come up higher. I just want you to come up higher. Just come up higher. Hallelujah. Verse 58. Then they dragged him out of the city and began to stone him. And the witnesses placed their garments at the feet of the young man named who? Saul. So we knew Saul heard all this. And while they were stoning Stephen, he prayed, Lord Jesus, receive and accept my spirit. And falling on his knees, he cried out loudly, Lord, fix not this sin upon them. Lay it not to their charge. And when he had said this, he fell asleep. See, as believers, we don't, we don't die. We just fall asleep. Yeah. Believe he, didn't, he didn't feel. I don't believe he felt one stone. Yeah. Thank you, Father. But what may have, what may have transpired in Saul's heart after that day. We know he was on a mission. We know it said he continued to persecute, persecute the church. But there was a day. There was a day. Let's go to chapter 9. Acts chapter 9. And Saul yet breathing out their threatenings and slaughtered against the disciples of the Lord he went unto the high priest and he desired of him letters to Damascus, to the synagogues, that he, that if he found any of this way, that's what the Christian walk was before. It's called, it was called the way. Whether they were men or women, he might bring them bound into Jerusalem. And as he journeyed, he came near Damascus and suddenly there shined round about him a light from heaven. And then he says this, verse 4, And he fell on the earth, and he heard a voice saying, Saul, Saul, why persecute you me? And what is it? Who are you, Lord? And the Lord said, I am Jesus whom you persecute. It's hard for you to kick against the pricks. And he trembling and astonished said, Lord, what will you have me to do? And the Lord said unto him, Arise. Go into the city, and it shall be told thee what you must do. I wanted to bring this out because I wanted to see that when he was at Stephen's death, Stephen saw the glory of God. Yet on that road to Damascus, the same thing that Stephen saw eclipsed Paul's life. It was the same glory that was present when Saul, Saul killed him. And it was also the same glory that ended up changing him. You see, 
And without staying long in this, I, I need you to see this this morning because, because it totally shifted Paul's priorities. His priority was what we just said. He was bound by the high priest to go kill everyone that ascribed to the way. That became his priority. And it was his pursuit. But yet on that day, when glory eclipsed his ordinary life, it transformed him into a supernatural believer. Go to, go to Philippians, and I'll, and I'll start closing with this. Philippians. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Jesus. Oh, his presence is here. Thank you, Father. I wrote a statement down this morning. I'm using the first service, but it, it can use it as well right here because... Woke up this morning, Lord gave me this phrase. He says, said, told me to tell you, when you shift your priorities, it opens the door to supernatural possibilities. When you shift your priorities, it opens the door to supernatural possibilities. I say it one more time. When you shift your priorities, it opens the door to supernatural possibilities. So here, what happened on that day, because of the glory of God, because Paul, all of a sudden now his eyes are open, his ears are open, and his heart has been changed, it shifted his priorities. And without the sake of time of building this up in Philippians 3, this whole chapter talks about the example of Paul. He talks about being a Pharisee of the Pharisee, counting the law. He was blameless. He talked about how he, the highest education, he sat at the feet of Gamaliel and, and how he was educated by the best. He was a Hebrew. He was also a Jew. And, and yet he had all these things that he could boast of in the natural. But yet what it comes down to is even though I had all that, I count it as dumb. I count it as nothing. All those things were my priorities. All those things were my focus. All those things are what drove me. All those things is what was caused me to have value about myself. All those things are what I was running after, but I got to a place where I count all those things as nothing. Those things didn't matter to me anymore. I'm telling you when glory truly eclipses your life, you don't want anything else. When you truly experience the power of God and the presence of God in your life, you don't want anything else. When you're truly in his presence, just church as usual doesn't do it anymore. And he was at this place and... In the Amplified, end of verse 8, at the very end of Amplified, verse 8, he says, I have lost everything and considered it all rubbish in order what, that I may win and gain Christ. Meaning none of those things matter anymore. My pursuit is Christ. And that I may actually be found and known as in him. Well, I love that because he is saying all those other things I was known for. I don't want to be known for that. I want to be known for being in Christ. You see, how to, 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 because we find, we can find our value in what we do. And we have to get to a place where Paul says, I want to be found and known as being in him. Not having, get this in the Amplified, any self-achieved righteousness that can be called my own Based on my obedience to the law's demands. Ritualistic uprightness and supposing right standing with, with God thus acquired. But possessing that genuine righteousness which comes through faith in Christ. This right standing with God which comes from God by saving faith. Verse 10. For my determined purpose. Now as we're seeing a priority shift here. My determined purpose is that I may know him. 
that I may progressively become more deeply and intimately acquainted with him, perceiving and recognizing and understanding the wonders of his person more strongly and more clearly. Get that? My determined purpose is to know him. Think about it. His priorities totally shifted. He went from being bound to kill them all to being my determined purpose is to know him. Man, we shift our priorities. Let's go to verse 12. Now hear this in light of when Paul experienced that on the road to Damascus. He says, not as though I had already attained, either were already made perfect. Attain means to receive. It means to lay hold of. So he's saying, it's not that I've already laid hold of this, and I'm not saying I'm already perfect. But what? I follow after. I follow after. He's telling them, look, he goes, church of Ephesus, I'm not saying that I'm perfect. And I'm not saying that I know everything. And I'm not saying I have full understanding of everything. But you know what? I follow after. See, my priorities have shifted. I follow after. If that, now get this, I may apprehend it, that I may apprehend, lay hold of, that which also I apprehended of Christ Jesus. What is he really saying here? I follow after. It's not that I've apprehended. Thank you, Father. I want to fully lay hold of the one that lay hold of me on that road that day. I, I want to apprehend. I want to lay hold of. The very one that apprehended me. I want to, I want to lay hold. I want to know him. I want to know everything about him. I want to know how his kingdom works. I want to know who I am in him. I want to know everything that God's called me to do. I want to know my purpose. I want to know everything I am. And it's only going to become when I follow after him. Because when I follow after him and I lay hold of that, everything changes. And he says this, brethren, I count not myself to have apprehended, but this one thing I do, I forget those things which are behind and I reach forth to those things that are before. Meaning I want to lay hold of the one that laid hold of me. And you know what? It can't be found back there. I can't get what I need there. The Lord spoke something to me years ago and when I was in Maryland and actually it was, I'd already moved to Salisbury and I was, um, and I asked the Lord, I said, why, why did I have to leave my hometown? And he said, because there's great things I want to do in your life and they can't take you there. Why couldn't I keep my same friends? Why couldn't I keep going to the same? Why? He goes, there's great things I want to do in your life and they couldn't take you there. I had to shift my priorities. And when you shift your priorities, it opens the door for supernatural possibilities. And then he said this, forget those things behind. He says, I press towards the mark for the prize of the high calling of God in Christ Jesus. What's the mark? Him. Him. That's what Paul said. My determined part is to know him. Wow. So we have to shift our priorities. And so when we shift our priorities, we'll start to see things we've never seen. When we shift our priorities, we'll start to hear things we've never heard. And when we shift our priorities, we'll understand things we've never thought we could understand. Stand to your feet. Thank you, Father. Hallelujah. 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 Thank you, Father. Hallelujah. Thank you, Father. In 2020, God has opened a new door 
and bring about supernatural increase like never before. Let's shift our priorities. As we shift our priorities, it will place us with an expectation for what he desires in our lives. I want to read this scripture as I close. Psalm 62, verse 1 says, Truly my soul waits only upon God. From him comes my salvation. He only is my rock and my salvation. He is my defense. I shall not be greatly moved. Verse 5, My soul wait thou only upon God. For my expectation is from him. And with Apostle Paul, my determined purpose is to know him. You see, and as you pursue him, he will place in you the expectation of everything that he has for you. From him comes my expectation. Thank you, Father. Hallelujah. Father, we just, as a church family, we make a decision to shift our priorities. So everyone with your heads bowed. And there's no one looking around. I want to ask the question. Are there some priorities you need to shift in order for God to bring about supernatural increase in your life? If you would say yes to that, just slip your hand up right where you are. Hallelujah. Thank you, Father. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Father. You saw those hands, Father, and you saw those hearts. I thank you there is something that has begun today. And there's a shifting of priorities. For some of you today, it's time to just go forward and not look back. Some of you, there's some relationships and friends you need to lay to the side. And arise and go forward. Thank you, Father. The greatest work is the work that you allow Him to do in your heart personally. I can can call, have an altar call and have people come down to the altar and it's not that that's a bad thing or a negative thing but the decision needs to be made in your heart one thing I ask as we go through fin- finishing this year and going to the next year is, is that you come to this place where you gain a heart to have intimacy with God Because for me personally, it was in those times of intimacy with him that he could take his finger of his word or listening to a message and put his finger on something and say, "Ah, change that, Justin. Ah, It doesn't need to be a priority anymore, Justin. Yeah, change that. Yeah. Yeah, that's a divine relationship. You know, Justin, that's not a divine relationship. So I hear a call this morning, a call for intimacy. I hear a call of shifting your priorities. I mean, we're all excited and can shout and praise God because we're excited about supernatural increase. But but most important is, will we, will we hear and see when the right door is open? You see, as you follow him, you'll see the door to go through. As you follow him, you'll see the relationships to cultivate. As you follow him, you will see the seeds to sow. As you follow him, you will see the church to be planted in. As you follow him. As you follow him. You'll come up, up, up. As you pursue him, expectation will build. 
as you pursue him, faith will be released. And as you pursue him, destiny will be fulfilled as you follow him. Just start to worship him. Just start to worship the Father. Hallelujah. You may be here today and you say, well, Pastor, I, 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 I'm not worthy for God to work in my life. Do you think Paul was worthy for God to work in his life? Receive his forgiveness today. For some of us here, some hear this. Let him heal your heart. Let him heal your loneliness. Let him heal your brokenness. Because I'm telling you those things, offense, brokenness, unforgiveness. Man, they can keep our... They, will keep, they can keep us from hearing what we need to hear and seeing what we need to see. So, Lord, we follow you. And, Lord, as we follow you, I thank you that you'll take care of that person that hurt me. That you'll be my vindication. You're my avenger. I, I, I give that to you, Lord. I give this loneliness to you, Lord. I give, this, I, I, I give this sickness. I give this disease to you. I give everything I am to you, Lord. I, I, I pursue you. I pursue you. My determined purpose is to know you. That my life doesn't consist of what I possess, but, but it consists totally of who you are and what you are. And I'm telling you, as I know you, Father, I know that you will bring increase financially, increase socially, increase mentally, increase in every area of my life. Hallelujah. Oh, thank you, Father. Oh, thank you, Father. Is there someone here that hear your left ear? There's something going on with your left ear. It's either a ringing or... I want you to just come over here. If that's you, you're something with your... I think it's left ear. Hallelujah. Thank you, Father. Hallelujah. Just start praying over the person, your left and your right. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. be drunk with wine, but we be filled with the Spirit. Hmm. Ha, ha, ha. Hey. Hey, Delay. Hallelujah. Nikki, I want you to place your hand on her ear. Hallelujah. Oh, la shiato. Glory's here, the glory. 
Hallelujah. Yeah. Yeah. Hmm. might be a strain and you never felt the presence of you never said I've never really felt the presence of God on my person before if that's you I know it might be strange and you may be embarrassed but I'm just following the Lord right now just want you to come up here lady and I went you don't need to you don't need to touch her or anything but she has to do the same thing with her just
No more scars No more brokenness Cause I brought you this far My love is enough It's flowing in you now For the thing that once held you You will never see before no, God. no more wounds No more scars For my plan for you Father, just renew within her your plan and your purpose, Father. That if anything else today, she would know how much she's loved by you. No more wounds, no more scars. No more wounds. As for some other people in this place, no more wounds, no more scars, no more wounds, no more scars. You mean? Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Mm. Thank you, Jesus. Flow, Tessa. Just build it. Just start to worship. Turn the keyboard up.
know what we are as a spirit-filled church? Hallelujah. Mm. We believe, according to what Jesus said, he said, that greater works than these will you do because I go to the Father. We believe as the book of Acts, the place was shaken with his presence. We believe that it can be shaken today. And we thank you that the Lord is shaking South Fort Worth in Crowley, Texas. Oh, he went. He, oh, he went to the Tarrant County. Hallelujah! He had Joseph ministers at the juvenile detention center. Hallelujah! And we believe that the glory of God is going before him, and he's going to Kimbo, right? Kimbo won't know what hit him today. Amen. Hallelujah! Hallelujah! Just be seated, just for a moment. Hallelujah. It's our fourth Sunday of the month, and it's we do missions offering, and and um, we're uh, sowing this offering in to help towards Christmas, uh, specifically a uh, children's home called uh, Casa de Destino, which is that we support already monthly as a church in Guatemala, and so this will go towards helping them uh, be able to do Christmas for um, for the children in that home. We have one of our own there, uh, Rihanna, that was working with our youth. And she's been there since September 23rd, and she'll be coming home when? Uh, December 17th. And so we're going to be a part of uh, helping them do Christmas, you know, there and, and be a part of that. So you can follow the give prompts on the, on the screen behind me. If you're doing towards uh, missions, I believe it's, uh, you just do uh, text, you do missions on the back side of it. Amen. Hallelujah. We won't share the announcement video. I'm going to have Cassie come up, but... Father, we just thank you for the opportunity to sow into the lives of young people during this Christmas season. I thank you, Father, that as we are your hands and your feet, to not just Guatemala or other organizations we're a part of in this church here, but I thank you that during this holiday season, they would know your love like never before. And we just thank you for the opportunity as a church family that we get to sow into their lives. In Jesus' name, amen. Ushers, receive the offering.